Moving forward. What about mobilities which have already started before they've gone? Mobilities which are planned, coordinated and imminent. Or at least that's the plan. That's the plan in emergency arrangements which coordinate a series and sequences of actions to occur in the advent or in preparation of an emergency or a punctual event or threat to life and other kinds of thresholds. Evacuation plans are put on standby and then activated. Some evacuation mobilities are longer term, whilst others are of the quality of a more sudden impact event. Some evacuees may be self-evacuated. It might be a much more chaotic, informal, illegal process perhaps. The legalities of evacuation are contested and ambiguous. Evacuation is often, although not exclusively, a problem for cities. And evacuation produces peculiar kinds of spaces of evacuation, places that are left behind and evacuated of presence. In amongst the various things that evacuation is, it is a particular form of or way of organising, watching over and governing mobility and it requires far more sustained study than it has to present. Evacuation is notably absent from many of the diverse mobilities of humans, non-humans and things that have been opened up to critical insight within the new mobilities paradigm. Indeed, the few studies that have turned their attention to evacuation from this kind of perspective have elaborated precisely the depoliticisation of the term. In other words, evacuation mobilities have often been approached and are often represented in such a way that they are lost of meaning and this is incredibly problematic because to present evacuation as a purely technical act or engineering solution is a political move of closure. That is to say that mobility becomes naturalised as the only possible thing, the only possible outcome. And what does this do to how we weigh up decisions? Where is guilt? Or the politics of who is evacuated and how and with what kinds of consequences? Evacuation seems a poor fit for existing and more familiar categories of mobile subjects, such as the homeless, refugees, migrants, passengers, drivers, even if evacuation certainly touches upon these subjects. Evacuation mobilities have traditionally been some of the most contentious and unknown forms of mobility, demonstrated by the fact that since the Second World War, numerous systems of governmental surveillance and registration have sought to manage the inherent plurality and unpredictability of evacuation. More recently, the evacuee has figured on the agendas of authorities pertaining to public health, transportation and highways, policing and emergency services at a whole variety of scales and spaces. It is therefore becoming increasingly important to ask just what is at stake in the surveillance, categorisation, mobilisation and treatment of the evacuated as they seem or it seems to be a figure that moves across different grounds, approaches, institutions and understandings, in other words, Different terminologies, different ideas, concepts and practices orbit this figure of the evacuated. Now central to this are the ways in which the evacuee has been subjected to an extensive but uneven effort to render it as legible through a variety of different administrations of forms of authority, bureaucracy and technology. Now the primary means to do this has been a, se a series of applications of techniques and technologies that try to make the evacuee visible and then attempt to sort, order and manage that subject physically and within complex and multi-scalar systems of records and databases accordingly. Given this, could we subject evacuation mobilities to what Mimi Scheller calls a mobilities justice? That is a politics that attempts to develop the capability of all to access mobility in order to meet their own basic needs. What this particularly recognises is that mobility capabilities are highly unevenly distributed across different spaces, subjects and bodies. But let me develop two related lines of inquiry, although there's much more to be said about this. So evacuation illust illustrates the ways that our mobility infrastructures can have dual purposes or other uses which are grafted and retrofitted onto them in certain emergency conditions. 
so that highways become evacuate lanes to take the people out of the path of a hurricane. New routes are found through buildings to escape from emergency exits. Holding areas and tall buildings provide refuge or evacuation through vertical evacuation policies and designs. And individuals and households are moved through networks of distribution to rest centres and beyond. During Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the closed international airport was reopened deliberately for evacuation. 24 hours after the storm hit, the airport became a main evacuation node to house patients from 23 of the 26 hospitals in the city underwater and airlift 2,700 patients to safety and 25,000 people to shelters. At its peak, a helicopter arrived between every 4 to 15 and 45 seconds. So the store forward logistical logic of this processing was spatially articulated and terminal space became redefined. For the first six hours, the upper departure level became a treatment area. The baggage claim was quickly used as a staging area People became objects that needed to be moved and triaged using the infrastructure of the airport just differently. Runways, apron, baggage conveyors, baggage cars and the baggage area were all redefined in order to do so. But we could also address evacuation through what Jennifer Heinemann has called a geopolitics of mobility. That is, how could we juxtapose the speed and dexterity of states and intergovernmental organisations to manage people out of place with their own capacity and resources to flee danger and seek safety elsewhere? So a week from the February protests in Libya in 2011, and the deteriorating situation as rebel groups and militias challenged the government's foreign nationals, were soon demanding that their states take them out of the way of danger, take responsibility because the local one could not. Evacuation, though, is always too slow. Public opinion at home in Britain and elsewhere vocalised that states, their governments, were not acting, that the decisions were inept and paralysed. Why were they not moving people to safety? The UN Security Council's no-fly resolution in late March would offer provision for evacuation, but until that point, other governments and interesting, interested corporates flirted with a variety of territorial incursions, which drew Libya's and its surrounding countries, ports, airports, airfields and landing strips into a network of evacuation processes. So, for example, non-combatant evacuation operations coordinating cell was established in the UK High Commission, supported by a cell in Crete, where thousands of Chinese workers would be ferried to Crete from Benghazi on Greek charter ferries. And a team in London were also coordinating the response between 16 different nations on a mix of different military aircraft. The Maltese government had set up their own evacuee processing hub, sorting over 8,000 people from over 50 countries in seven days, arriving by hopping aircraft or ferry to be eventually flown elsewhere. So which countries have planned to hook their populations out of harm's way is really a crucial dividing line in this kind of evacuation. So for example, as Tripoli Airport's main terminal became a camping ground for thousands of Tunisians, Eritreans and Egyptians trying to leave, but they couldn't. Those lucky enough to be airlifted out were predominantly embassy and consulate officials and their families, journalists, and a large proportion of Turkish, Italian and Chinese construction workers, alongside electrical engineers, geologists and lenders, and of course oil workers placed in more remote parts of the country. In many ways, they were liquid workers, in Zygmunt Bauman's and John Urry's terms, highly mobile, but whisked away by the fluid resources they ironically extract, leaving the rest to make their way to land borders or to wait. So in short, evacuation is a crucial, if highly inequitable form of protection that deserves far more scrutiny than it currently has. It can do much good, but it can also do a lot of harm. And until we can begin to excavate these practices and policies and politics, and to distinguish evacuation from, but also br bring evacuation in relation to other sets of mobile subject, how can we subject it to proper scrutiny and critique? Indeed, whilst evacuation might seem to be about the exceptional emergency events, it isn't. Evacuation is always around us in one form or another, sometimes in plain sight, just waiting to happen.